everybody, Realm Builder Guy here, and welcome back to the channel and to a new Crusader Kings 3 guide. But before I get into today's topic, which is, of course, Brittany, as you know, I want to give a big shout out and thank you to everybody that's been liking, commenting, and subscribing. It really, really means a lot to me. And if you don't mind, you can also check out the links down in the description where you will also find the chapter references to this video, but you will also find the links to the Discord community, which is growing. You can follow me on Twitter. You can also follow me on Twitch where I will be streaming in future, uh, or depending on when you're watching this, maybe I already am streaming. And of course, you can find the link to Patreon where you can find out all the great benefits and how you can support this channel and what I do. So I've been told one thing YouTubers do that I haven't been doing is setting like targets and goals on videos. And we're going to try that today. So let's see if on this guide we can hit 100 likes. So if you haven't done so already, just hit that like button. So, or if you want to wait to the end, that's fine. Now today I want to talk about Brittany and I'm going to cover them both in 867 and 1066. It's such a fascinating country, culture, and eh, campaign in Crusader Kings. I will be talking first about just in general in 867. I'm going to talk to just in general a little bit about Brittany and its history. Uh, and then, of course, the interesting characters you find in 867. And then I will go into specific strategies for playing as Brittany in 867. Then comes Brittany in 1066. We're going to do the same thing. But then at the end, after 1066, I'm going to talk about a possible strategy you can employ for both start dates. So you may want to stick around till the end. But first of all, let's get into Brittany in 867. So welcome to Brittany in 867. At this point in time, the kingdom of Brittany wasn't around very long. It got founded in 851 and only lasted until 19, uh, 19, until 919. Uh, where it fell to the Norse invaders. And that's a constant theme during this time period, not just in Crusader Kings, but in general for this coastal region in real life history. So it was officially founded by Erispo after he defeated Charles, Charles the Bald even in 851. He was then murdered, and we'll get into that in a second. And his successor is this gentleman you see right over here which is King Solomon. Now, King Solomon, who succeeded his cousin, Arispo, and is credited with assassinating his cousin, he worked to destabilize the Franks to the east because obviously this was a big power base that was threatening him. He allied actually with the Viking invaders and even the Pope tried to urge him to not do that because Vikings are heathens and you need to be a good Christian and, you know, stick to the Christians. But he decided to do what he needed to do. And in 866, 868, good Lord, maybe it's the head cold I'm battling, but in 868, he made peace with Charles the Bald and actually became a vassal of West Francia. He himself was assassinated in 874 and this led to a civil war amongst the plotters. Um, now, the plotters, we'll get into those in a second because they are here in the game. Um, now, in 939, so again, the, the Norse took over Brittany in 919. In 939, Alan Twistedbeard, awesome name, reconquered Brittany. Uh, but because of the loss of power, really coming back as a king and challenging the Franks wasn't in the card. So instead, he reestablished it as a duchy paying homage to the Franks, and it would stay a independent or in semi-independent duchy until the 16th century when it unified officially with France. So I talked about King Solomon. You see him here of House Pohar. Not a major house, because again, he was a cousin. He wasn't a direct descendant. He's got all the titles you need. He's got two of three domains. But I'd mentioned a few of the plotters, and let's just get into that here. Now, first of all, you have Prince Guruant of House Ren, and you can see right here he has a pressed claim on the Kingdom of Brittany, but he is not alone. You go over to Van, and you have Prince Pasuet, Pasueten, who also has a pressed claim on the Kingdom of Brittany. These are the two plotters that ended up 
murdering King Solomon, and then they couldn't get along, and it was a big civil war, and the Vikings took advantage of that. Then over here, you have Kuanai, Kuanai, I don't know how to pronounce it, and Count Alfron. Now, this wasn't really a major player at this point in time, but the house is one that we will get back to in 1066, so stick around for that one. Now, if you're going to play either as Brittany or as one of these murderous fiends, uh, the cousins of the king, your strategy is pretty much the same. Once you take over Brittany as one of the murderous theme, uh, uh, fiends, or if you're King Solomon, you've got a few choices to make. Now, if you're going to start as King Solomon, uh, you've got a few things to keep an, an eye on. First, you have the Norse here in uh, uh, the house Brest, but it's Leon. It's Count Olafur. He is Norse, and he only has 197 men. So this is one you can actually roll pretty quickly. To the south, you have another Norse that I talk about in one of my five fun starts um, in 867 videos that I will try to remember to link at the top. And that is Count Heston. Now, Heston, of course, as such, you know, you're like, eh, is it really that powerful? I mean, he's a very powerful char character, even though he's not as powerful as he was in the initial launch of CK2, uh, CK3 even. The key thing is here, those 3,000 special soldiers. Now, they don't replenish, so that's something to keep in mind. But you're going to have to try to neutralize him somehow. And at this point in time, you just don't have the strength. Not, not even close. So... What's the first play? Now, you're not married, neither is your child and heir. One thing you can do right away, because you are at the kingdom tier, is look over here to Charles the Bald and marry your child to one of his children, become allies. Um, that is something I strongly recommend, because then you've got, first of all, a neut neutralized West Francia. So they're not going to attack you at that point in time. But on top of that, you have a powerful ally who's also interested in Heston not being powerful. So you could, with that combined force, you'd have a superior one, take on Heston. Now, of course, you have to keep in mind what West Francia is doing at a given time. So going to have to play that. But I would ally West Francia first and then declare a holy war against Leon because you can. They are of different faith and you can conquer that pretty quickly. Uh, then the next thing you want to look at is dealing with these murderous fiends. And that's where the next strategy, of course, is very simple. Murders. Kill them. Just kill them off. Now, n you're a very high intrigue character. They are not. Now, historically, they murdered Solomon. But Solomon can, given his intrigue level and the fact that he is an intricate web weaver, go out and and murder them, which is something I would definitely do. I would target these guys because they have press claims, and those press claims will become unpress claims to their children. Now, alternatively, if you're going to play one of these, well, create a faction and overthrow King Solomon. Uh, murder is a great way to do that, um, but of course, there are other ways you can go about that too. You definitely have to uh, knock out the opposing pressed claim rival. I would say probably first before you take on Solomon. So those are kind of the characters for Brittany in 867, as well as strategies that I would definitely go after. So again, in summary, West Fra if you are going to play a Solomon, ally West Francia, attack Leon. When you have that, consolidate your power. Look at possibly attacking Heston. See what is happening at a given time. West Francia will also be destabilized at some point because of wars with Lotharingia and Italy and East Francia, as well as realms to the south. So that's a chance to maybe start carving out a little bit of West Francia for yourself. But for now, keep them on your side through alliances and marriage alliances. Um, get kids, marry yourself and marry off your heir. Uh, but that is the strategy here. Again, if you're going to play one of these guys, take out the rival, whichever one you choose to start off with, and then work on getting rid of the king himself. So now let's head over to 1066. Welcome to Brittany in 1066. Now, as you can see, it's a little different. It's significantly more 
consolidated, but you are no longer a king. It is a duchy. And instead of West Francia, you have powerful France to the east and England to the north. So strategies will change a little bit. But first, let's get into a little bit of the history. Now, you start off as Duke Conan, who is 33 years old and unmarried. His heir is his sister, who is married to Count Hoel of this house, where I already mentioned. We're going to talk about them in a second. So, Conan took over after his father was murdered, and he always uh, believed that his father was poisoned by the eternal enemies, namely the Normans. Normandy was the eternal enemy in that sense, uh, and William in particular, but we'll, we'll get into that in a second. So he took over, and it was always tumultuous. He always faced a lot of internal challenges, more than external, and the biggest pain in the butt for him was his uncle, Count. I mean, here's Edouard, uh, is sometimes as seen as Edward, but also as Count Otto. Now, the other major problem he had is that any insurrections against Conan were financed in large part by William the Bastard, future King of England. So uh, he battled that most of his life. He was eventually actually killed in December of 1066. So just a few months after the start date here. And he was killed by poisoned riding gloves. And the theory is that the order came from William and Normandy, who had tried multiple times to invade Brittany and conquer it and didn't succeed. And I actually get into that when I talk about both my France guide and a little bit in my Britain guide in 1066. So I'll try to remember to link those as well. So again, he was poisoned with poisoned riding gloves. He wiped his mouth and was then found dead from that. He was then succeeded by his brother-in-law because his sister couldn't actually inherit her husband inherited and as such the house of this uh Cornouille, i don't know a never greedy always vigilant um <laughs> uh, took over and actually ruled uh, the the realm from 1072 eventually i mean it took a while to consolidate the power until 1156 and his main thing was to stabilize the realm and as such actually worked out a peace deal with uh, William and the Normans. So Normandy was not that big of a problem. Now you could start as either one of these, um, you know, Count Oel, of course, you know, he's got intrigue and so on. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, he's, he's a good character. He's relatively average. If you murder Conan, well, then you've taken over. Or you could be Conan himself, and you do have a claim on Normandy. Or you can play as a significantly different character who's very, very interesting, and that is Otto. Now, Otto himself has just this one county, but he has multiple claims on the county of Rennes, the county of Nantes, the county of Vannes, as well as the Duchy of Normandy and the Duchy of Brittany. Now, if you look up here who his grandparents were, his one grandfather was Duke Conan of Brittany, and his other one was Duke Richard the Fearless of Normandy. So that's where that line of succession goes. Now, of course, Duke Conan himself also has a claim on Normandy. So it plays it really, really interesting. You do have one child as well. Um, you can see him uh, as a bastard, but he's not le legitimized, so he cannot inherit. So don't forget to marry now, if you're going to play Otto, you don't have a problem with kids because you have 14 of them. So playing the, the uh, marriage game in that sense is something in the alliance game. If you're Otto, you can do. And, you know, the first thing you want to do is destabilize Conan, of course. Look at the other counts in the realm and try to get close with them. Gain some good allies. And, of course, murder your, your nephew. Um, you don't have great intrigue, so that's something to keep in mind, but a great steward. But you've got plenty of kids. You could do it. One of the more interesting kids here is Alan the Red or Alan Rufus. He is actually a very close friend of William of Normandy. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now, as far as strategies goes, if you're going to play as Conan and Brittany, first of all, get married, get some legitimate kids. That way you can keep it in your line. 
and make sure it doesn't pass on to a different house. What are the strategies you need to do? Now, first of all, you need to keep an eye on William, and I'll get into that in a second. The other thing is ally France. You can't do that yet. You are a duchy, they are a kingdom. Now, um, you can marry one of King Philippe's family members, and it does give you an alliance. But the problem is his opinion of you is only plus eight. So you're going to have to sway him and boost that opinion. And then you get past the negative modifier and they will accept a marriage alliance. And then you've got a powerful ally, not just in terms of internal strife, but also against England or Normandy. So next thing is, you know, nobody here is a great intrigue, intriguer, intrigant. None of them are nasty killers in that sense, but to go after some of your internal rivals, in particular, your troublesome uncle, is the first thing you want to try to do. So knocking out your rivals is a big one. Now, William himself, I've seen this play out so many times. Only once on any playthrough has he, has he conquered England and maintained control. Now, if he maintains control, there's going to be a little bit of weakness here in Normandy. The problem is declaring on Normandy while they are part of France, well, then you're going to have to deal with the French. So, and, and they will just wipe you out. I mean, that's, that's just a fact. Unless you can build up enough mercenary strength to counterbalance that, or you find an ally somewhere in the HRE, or Barcelona, Navarre, you name it, to the south to destabilize them, or maybe even England itself. But what I've also seen quite often is William not, not holding on to England, going back to Normandy, declaring independence from France and becoming an independent nation. Once he's independent, this is someone to take on. By then he will not have those 4,400 special soldiers. So that is definitely something you want to do. Uh, Normandy is your best bet of expanding right away. The other thing that Conan tried a few times was to take over Anjou and Montague as well. But obviously, as long as they're part of France and you are in your current state, I would not recommend that. Now, I did mention at the beginning of the video that I have a potential strategy to play as Brittany either at 867 or 1066. And I think it's a very legitimate strategy, and that is to play CK3 tall. What I mean by tall is, of course, you don't really expand your current realm. You solidify it. You invest in your domain, in your holdings, and try to get as many holdings internally as you can. You start here in 1066, you still have one more left in your dome, in your holdings. So you can definitely expand within there, develop it, become powerful, and then become a power player in Europe. Play the alliance game, the marriage game. Maybe play some in your family into Normandy because, again, you do have a claim there or within France, or even in England, or your cultural soulmates as a Brit Breton in Wales, or Cumbar, or in Cornwall. Uh, those are all possible strategies. You could even do a bit of a colonial strategy. I mean, it's not colonizing, but maybe look at the British Isles or the north coast of Spain. But playing Brittany Tall in 1066 is a little bit easier than in 867 just because you're not dealing with Norman invasions all the time, but it is a legitimate strategy in either one. One of the nice things is, in Brittany, if you take over, say, Count Otto's uh, holdings, you actually gain a significant amount of income every month because, if we scroll in here, if we look at what they have, they have small harbors, and they've got a few small harbors. So that is something... Uh, that brings in a decent amount of revenue. You don't have gold mines or anything like that, but if you start there and then invest more internally in building up your domains and holdings, you will end up making a good amount of money. Now, if there was a trade mechanic in CK3, which I still hope there will be one day, then of course this is a legitimate route you can go as well. But playing Tall Brittany, either in 867, but especially in 1066, would be extraordinarily intriguing. If you don't want to play Tall or minimally Tall, Normandy would be the place to expand into, depending on what William does, what happens in England, and how you ally with France. But your first steps, deal internally and try to ally France. So that means get on King Philippe's good side 
and then they will accept the alliance. So I hope this helped. If it did, if you found this interesting, please hit a like and subscribe if you are new. Remember, trying to get to 100 likes on this video, it'd be great if we destroy the 100 likes. So until next time, I'm Realm Builder Guy, and I will talk to you soon.